Hello, Jen Adams here, the skin health expert, doing my going live on Friday at one o'clock. I'm um, a couple of minutes early as always. I thought I would try a slightly different uh, position in the house because the sun was really annoying last week. So I've gone for the more comfy, cosy sofa effect with the excessive Englishness of my cottage. So I hope the sound is good um, and the audio, sorry, I hope the audio is okay and that visually it's all right because again I've gone from my laptop rather than my camera so everything you know every day is a school day we're learning all these new things I've still got my comments so if you are watching me live and you'd like to give me a thumbs up I would really appreciate um, that just to know that you're there that'd be lovely and I'm going to talk mainly about today or I'm going to talk mainly again today about um skin rejuvenation treatments so i've had a couple of comments on my high food videos and i want to follow on a little bit more about my sweeping statements that i was discussing about dry skin and nutrition yes uh, last week um, if you didn't see that you can have a look at last week's video i talk about recommending apple cider vinegar for gut issues to help with dry skin was the actual main focus um, but any major skin conditions really and I spoke about targeting and improving the gut flora. So there's a lot of chat in there about um, apple cider vinegar. So anyway, oh, am I still there? Yes, sorry, I thought I'd, I thought it disappeared. So here we are going live. So the questions I have, like I say, for this week, I got a lovely question. And funny enough, it was literally off the back, I think, of last week's live. So that was quite cool. Anyway, uh, Royal R asked me, do I think Haifu will make her face thinner? And we have chatted before about her high food treatment. So I do think she's got quite a few questions and a few concerns about um, having the high food. Um, now, this opened up a nice or followed on, let's say, from a nice question that I did last time, as I say, about um, home treatments versus professional treatments. And this sort of kicks on with this again, because links in with this again, because the main issue with high food where people have heard for example, their face may get thinner or and it breaks down the fat pads in the skin. This comes from um, all therapy, which is popular in America, which is a form of, of high foo, high intensity focused ultrasound. So there's concerns about this thinning the skin and reducing the, the sort of fat pads in our skin. Yes, it's a possibility. But again, the idea of doing these live chats is to be able to add a bit more depth to the answers so I can give you a bit more of a background to help you understand a little bit more about what I'm saying and why. I said to, to the lady on the, on the comments was no when done correctly. Yeah, and that's, that's the problem with most issues or concerns when you're talking about treatments. The high, foo intense, the high intensity focused ultrasound is a massive amount of energy being put into your skin. The depth of the energy as it goes into the skin is dictated by the different cartridges that we use. As a skin protocol or using that energy at that depth is what we're taught or, or protocols are given to us and the, the boundaries are set. My concerns with home treatments is that people aren't given these boundaries and they don't understand why. So home treatments have a higher risk of potentially breaking down fat pads and making skin thinner. My true belief would be via a professional based high food treatment. No, I wouldn't make a skin thinner and I wouldn't break down the fat pads in her skin with the treatment because I know the depths and the levels of energy that is right for her skin based on the machine and the skin protocols. To give you a background to that of why I know, let's say, the, the depth that we go here, let's say, is where we're looking at SMAS and we've got a lot of muscle here. Yeah, even if you don't physically have chunky cheeks and you're quite thin in the face, you still physically have the muscles. You have structure, right? So here, I've got red by touching my skin. Look, by here, by treating it here at the the bigger depth, so a four mil, three mil, I can get a bigger lift. 
if my client was particularly thin skinned here, then I wouldn't do a four mil deep treatment. I would only go down to three mil and then use the two mil on top. So we can adapt the treatment based upon the client that is presenting to us. And as you know, I always personally and sort of professionally would go down the route of less is more. So if you had thinner skin, I wouldn't do a four mil skin tightening treatment. I would only do three mil plus two mil on top for tightening. OK, the other reason I know that I wouldn't cause this damage is, is that the fat pads that sit under here, there is no way I would be putting that level of energy that I would put down here at the same depth across here. Two reasons. A, you're going to break down the fat pads, right? And also it hurts. It really hurts because it bounces off the, the sort of cheekbone. So I only ever go sort of to three and four around here. You see where I'm drawing on my skin. <laughs> And then as you start to come up to here, you would only go two mil, one and a half mil depth. So therefore, I know that I wouldn't break down any fat pads within her skin. Over treating the skin, you've heard me many times talk about deep would be between 12 and 16 weeks treatments apart. On skin would be between four and six weeks apart. Even if you only had that treatment every six to eight weeks of your life, it wouldn't over treat the skin and thin the skin because actually what we're looking to do is we're creating the collagen underneath. The worst thing that can happen is, is that you don't create the collagen. Now, if you had that treatment every week, yes, I would say it could cause potential damage and thin or break down the collagen in your skin because that's what you're looking to do. You're causing a trauma. And if you just keep breaking the collagen down and keep causing that trauma, it can't build back up again. So to answer the question, it is no when done correctly. If abused, yes, it could thin your skin. And another question was asked about the fat pads. So talking of thin skin, I then got um, another question because I'm going to come back about and because I, I want to talk about over treating the skin because I've got some stories to tell you. Um, but there was another question by I think it was a chap. Um, Alex, his name was, I think. Um, he asks, what does high food do for forehead wrinkles and uh, frown lines? Well, again, the standard answer is it. the idea you're doing is you're looking to sort of tighten the skin. So therefore, it would reduce the visual look of them. Now, the issue with this is, is that above here, you can only really go two mil, one mil depth. And the amount of energy that I can put in this area is also limited because A, it hurts and there's not a lot of flesh there. So the HIFU is limited in what it can do around these areas. However, there is never a day that I wouldn't do a HIFU around a brow and around an eye area for skin tightening. And a couple of weeks into lockdown, I'm starting to feel these effects. Yeah, I'm desperate to do some HIFU around here and I like to do it over my brow as well. But to note, I still have wrinkles and I still have frown lines. What affects or what causes the wrinkles and the frown lines is where I want to add a bit more uh, as a backstory to this question. More often, it's the heaviness and it's the thickness of the skin on the forehead that can cause the sort of, in, you know, the intensity, I guess, of the frown lines. Everyone's obsessed with not having lines here, you know, and when I do a high food treatment, I don't do the high food treatment here. I do the high food treatment across here and across here to help tighten so that it would reduce my frown line okay rather than just smacking it there so the idea is, is that you're sort of doing this stretch now the other issue like i say with what causes these deep wrinkles and things is the heaviness yeah there's quite some quite big muscles under here that are lifting and moving our eyes but our skin can get quite thick on our foreheads. It seems to be an area where the skin cell turnover definitely slows down. It can be quite open poured. It can hold a lot of oil. I have a beautiful client who I know she has good skincare and I know she um, she has a fringe, but her hair has got nothing to do with her forehead. And her skin on her forehead is so different to the skin on her face. Um, you know, and it, it does baffle me sometimes uh, because I know it is such a difference. And whenever 
she's not very well or um, you know she's taken a foot off the, the pace with her skincare, it's always her forehead, I can always tell. So the forehead can be quite different to the rest of the face. Now, my brain thinks it's something to do with the immune system that's going on and it's all to do with the circulation, but that's a whole other conversation. But going back to Alex's question, quite often men can have quite thick skin on their foreheads. And if you think if something's quite thick and it's quite heavy, it's going to sort of sla sag slightly, right? So the intensity of a forehead or the four um, frown lines can look more deep set because the skin is thicker. So with that approach, I would actually, and I think I said this in my answer to him, my approach, if he came into clinic and he said to me, this is my big concern, my first port of call would be the micro skin needling and skin rejuvenation. So I would be looking to improve his skin cell turnover to its best abilities, making sure there's no excessive oil here, making sure that the open pores aren't holding onto the sebum and causing this heavy, thick set skin. So I'd look to peel his skin and get him into an exfoliation routine. And then I'd look to micro needle and cause that micro trauma just under the top epidermal level so that we can actually start to get this tightening at sort of more superficial level rather than relying on the haifu to do that. So I think that was my advice to him, but that's the reason why I'm actually oddly wanting to thin his skin through skin rejuvenation and stimulate collagen more higher up on the surface rather than with the haifu. However, it doesn't say I wouldn't, I wouldn't haifu his forehead as well. But if he stood in the clinic, as I say, and that was his main issue, I would go skin pe I would go skin first, microneedling, and then haifu in that order to treat those issues. And do so when ladies come to me about this line. You know, it's about stretching this skin out and keeping this skin of good quality. So it's like this bottom half. It's got that tone and that texture. So my other little note before I talk about nutrition again <laughs> was um, over-treating skin. And then I wanted to share with you a story that I uh, met a, a lovely lady 18 months ago, I think it was. And beautiful thing, very, very white, sort of perfect skin. And um, she she came to see me because she'd heard about microneedling. There we go. So that was quite good. And uh, we were having a chat and I said, oh, what's your current skincare routine? And she was do di do 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 can't even say it. She was brilliant. You know, she never missed a, a routine, but she also um, had a beauty therapist. And I don't know who or what products they used, but she had regular facials. And then when she said, when she said regular, I was like, oh, OK, fair enough. Anyway. So I got her under the microscope or got her on the slab and I started massaging her skin and her skin, the only way I could describe it, as she's not in the room, it was waxy. And I'd never seen skin like that before and I've been doing skin hmm, seven, eight years and I thought, that's odd. So anyway, I dug a bit deeper and treated her skin and even though her skin felt different, I could kind of work out what she needed. It needed texture. And what had happened was that it was oily and like I say, waxy. And the, it, it wasn't very porous, which really made me think, what, what have you been doing to your skin? Anyway, it turns out that she'd been having mycodermabrasion. So literally sanding off her face every week. I was like, Every week? For how long? Now, I may be mistaken because this was a good 18 months ago, but she definitely had a lot of microneedling. And then she spoke to me about some peels. They were doing some glycolic peels. She spoke to me about TCA peels. And she had taken the advice, probably very right, from this therapist. And she'd been going very regularly, it's probably the best way to say, very regularly, to have these treatments. And I was like, well, are you happy? But of course, we don't, and still recently, obviously looking on Instagram, everyone looks at everyone else's skin, but you only know your own skin. So she didn't know that her skin was slightly different to anyone else's skin because it's her skin. But the more I got to know her and the more I started to understand, basically what I was feeling was that all the natural skin mantle, all the natural skin microbiome and its healthy um, sebum regulation, um, 
and the what else am I, what am I trying to say? It all just been scraped off. There was just nothing left. It was just like it had literally all all I kept I was thinking about telling this story last night and all I could think to myself was it's like it'd been rubbed so much to the point that it was polished and it was shiny. And as much as like on the surface it looked okay, as you looked at it, this skin had no texture. And she was really struggling to maintain the oiliness of it because her makeup was literally just sliding off her face. And she was, wasn't obviously some issues really because she wasn't overly happy with her skin. And I was like, but it's flawless in a way. But she kept putting the makeup on and the makeup was sliding off. So moral of my story, please do not over treat your skin because you, you, you scrape away the natural um, sebum regulation and the natural skin cell turnover, which prevents it. So what what's kind of happened, oh, I can't got coffee down here and I'm fiddling with this. What's happened is, is that their skin is so clever, right? It's actually quite stupid because it what it's done is it had protected itself against this daily, this weekly buffing, I suppose is the best way to explain it. And by protecting itself, it learned that if I produced a new skin, a new layer of skin cells, she's only going to scrape them off. And then, and then scrape them off. And then scrape them off. So what was happening was she was literally polishing off the, the, the pores that were naturally able to hold the sebum to the point that these pores didn't recreate. So as the sebum was coming to the surface, they were just sliding off. So, of course, she's got oily skin. So she keeps treating herself with oily skin. Sacialic acid, glycolic acid, lactic acid regular peels, mycodermabrasion. So every time the body tried to naturally heal itself, she just kept thinking, I need to get rid of that, I need to get rid of that. To the point then that it turns into, well, I'll tell you what, I'll stop doing that because you're only going to get rid of it. So what I'll do is I will sort of create this scar type tissue to protect myself against the trauma that's about to come. So what had happened was her skin had become um, it's harsh to say one big scar, but it's the sort of best way I can explain it and explain it. All the natural skin microbiome had been taken away that much, that often, that the skin cells had learnt, because don't forget they talk to each other downwards. They The cells communicate to each other all the time. So again, using my umpa lumpa analogy, you can imagine sort of thinking, well, there's no point, mate, because you're just going to get scraped off the top. So don't even bother. You know, you can imagine this whole kind of communi cell communication coming down. So there wasn't any vitamin E, vitamin A, vitamin D absorption coming in. So hence her skin was very pale. She was start, It was starting to lack tone because you couldn't get anything in there to kind of stimulate the collagen production. You know, it was all like this huge catch-22 and it was all based upon this excessive microdermabrasion. Now, luckily, there's not a lot of microdermabrasion around anymore, but there are a lot of peels going round and um, a lot of exfoliation. And I talk a lot about preparing your skin. So I just wanted to sort of share that story with you that I do see it. And this lady was had done this professionally. So it's just to sort of keep an open mind when you are seeing professionals. You know, is this working? Is it working? Are you happy with your skin? If you're not, ask them, challenge them, you know, these sorts of things. It, there's no harm in asking back the questions. Is this right? Can I try something else? But the great thing was, was that after a couple of micro skin needling um, with this client, I did about two or three skin cell turnovers, which is my common number that I think that I can kind of get the skin into a really good place. It all started to open up and move. So again, the skin is so clever. It can heal, but you need to give it clear direction. And unfortunately, the direction previously was to defend itself whereas by doing the sort of slow and low approach with the micro skin needling and what I was doing was I was pushing in all the products that the top layer needed and I was influencing next month's skin each time so by the time it came to the surface we started to get this more softer suppler um, more reactive and absorbent skin cells so quite quickly we were able to um, improve her skin tone which was amazing and a great result so that was a good one. My other little quick story I wanted to share was that um, I also met talking about thin skinny seats triggered all these little things in my head. Another one that I wanted to share was I met another lovely lady in the last lockdown, actually. And um, 
we were talking about her skincare routine. She was using Biological Reishi, and I've got a bit of an obsession that people use way too much product from that from that company. As you all know, I'm a massive fan, um, and I think it's brilliant, but you really don't need to use half as much as what they do. Anyway, and she was rollering in with her home roller the quintessential serum. And again, you heard me last week talk about the quality of serum for micro uh, needling or mesotherapy serums, how the different active based ingredients and the molecule um, size to enable it to work more efficiently. And actually rollering in topical um, serums doesn't enhance or improve the efficacy of that serum. Anyway, the other thing that we noticed was that she did, she was very fit. Don't get me wrong. She was very fit. She was a very slender lady. But again, she did have this thin skin. And um, she said, oh, yeah, I microneedle. I was like, oh, brilliant. This is great. Da, da, da. And we're talking about the serums. And I said, all right, okay, fine. Carry on doing it with pleasure. But if you're going to spend that kind of money on a biological reishi, quintessential serums, don't be rolling it into your skin because you're not getting the full benefits of it. You need to do this. Anyway, so we spoke about her microneedling um, protocol and she was using the roller every day. Every day. I was like, <gasps> what? Every day she put her um, Elastin Pure, was what it was called then, her Elastin Pure in her eyes to improve her. And every day she was, ro and honestly, she was rolling in this thing like, mm, and I was like, ah, stop, stop, stop. Her skin was good because she was using good products but there was a thinness to it there was there was it needed buoyancy needed her, her thing was I, I want plumping I want dewiness and I was like yeah stop doing that then yeah um and again we got a great result with that so she carried on what we we're doing I reduced her needling down to I got her to like once every two weeks uh, and the aggressiveness down and improved the serums um, and brilliant. Yeah, she moved on and much happier with the skin. So, you know, it's all out there to do, but there is some, a lot of excessive treatments going on and I don't think lockdown's helping the situation. So please, if you feel that you're watching this and you think, am I, am I doing it too much? Please get in touch and I'll be more than happy to help and explain what and why and, and help you with your protocols. And then my final little thing I want to talk about today, as I say, I touched on um, immune um, our, um, our gut flora and the benefits of our gut flora if if dealing with uh, dry skin and I gave you a great tip um, to help get started and it made me start to think more about I harp on about the quality of our skincare and I just wanted to touch on for a couple of minutes the quality of supplements and the world of supplements very similar in the world of skincare so please be careful if you are listening to me and looking at possibly your quality of your gut flora and looking at ways to improve that um, based upon what I've been saying. If you, as I touched on last time, if you look at your skin and I tell you to prepare it and I tell you to drop the pH of it and then I tell you to treat it with serums and then protect it with cream, right? Your gut works in exactly the same way. So I've mentioned about apple cider vinegar and protect it, sorry, and preparing the gut lining to get the pH in the right place. It works in the same way when we talk about targeting serums. As long as the pH is in a good place, you can then put in your targeted um, supplements, your multivitamins, your minerals, and the efficacy of those will improve based upon the pH level of your, your gut flora. And I'm giving you the absolute headlines with this. There is a lot more to this and there are so many variables, but I'm just trying to introduce these two things. Hello, thank you, thumbs up. So the thing is, when we're looking at gut flora, it works in the same way as my client who had microdermabrasion done every day. <laughs> every day, it wasn't that bad, every week. A lot of people in the past have taken a lot of antibiotics to help remove bacteria, viruses, all those sorts of things. This works in the same way as my lovely client, right? Every time you take, pro um, take antibiotics, it clears everything out, right? So it's like doing a massive TCA peel on your gut. It's probably the best way to think about it, right? So it needs to be refed. It needs the good bacteria back in it. Now, I know I'm not talking about anything new here. You all know about probiotics. My message I want to get out today 
is probiotics are like skin cream, right? Don't just be chucking any old stuff on because it says probiotics on the on the list, right? Probiotics and the world of supplements is the same as skincare. You need to look at what's in it. Now, again, you've got degrees of good and we've got degrees of bad. I'm not going to go through, oh, you need this one, oh, you need that one, oh, you need this one. You know my role is I want to educate you so that you can learn and understand what it is that you're looking for. So the point for today, if you are listening to what I'm saying about gut and you're relating this to your skin and you want to improve your gut flora because you believe that it's not functioning to its best ability, maybe you've had quite a a lot of um, intake of antibiotics over the past or you do suffer with gut problems. If you're starting to look at this, oh, maybe I should take some probiotics because that crazy lady that talks about skin and nutrition says it's a good idea. Please, when you're looking at probiotics, look at it as you would your skincare, right? You, you've learnt over the years, I'm sure, of what to buy and what not to buy. You, it's, about, it's often about brands you trust, you know, brands you like, um, ingredients and finances. Now, the thing is with probiotics, you can buy them in the supermarket, you can buy them in boots, you can buy them at um, what I would sort of call professional grade type um, supplement houses, things that I use and recommend to clients. And then there's specialist probiotics again, right? So this is like going to see your dermatologist for your retinol, yeah? Buying retinol from me and then buying retinol at Boots. Your probiotics work in the very similar way, okay? Now, the key thing I want you to look for and to help you identify these is sugar. Sugar is a nightmare. It is the devil of all, right? So the problem is with probiotics that everybody initially looks at, and I don't want to mention brand names, as you know, but the things that you would buy in the yogurt form, for example, right? These do not contain the right type of probiotics that I'm talking about. These contain more sugar than they do probiotics, and they're going to cause more gut irritant to your, more irritants to your gut than they are going to add probiotic, right? If you're drinking it out of a little pot, Check the label because I can guarantee, even though it will say lactobacillus, lactoacidosis, lactobifidosis, all these big posh words, it will also say fructose corn syrup. It will also say additive E225, right? This isn't what we're talking about. That is like, I don't know, if you look at whatever cream it is that you would never put on your skin, this is the same. When you're looking at probiotics or your supplements, please take into account the same morals that you have for your skincare. So skincare, you know, prepare, treat, protect. With internally, in the same way, prepare your gut, treat it with what you want and then protect it against nasties. Think of them as the same thing rather than two completely different things. So my biological reishi clients, you know, they'll probably spend £170 on a pot of cream and then drink Actamil. Oh my God. Yeah. So that was all I really wanted to touch on um, and to open up that conversation. So if people have got questions about probiotics and they've got questions about what's right for their gut in relation to improving dry skin. And when I say dry skin, yes, it could be dry skin is in dry skin to touch. But I'm also talking things like eczema and psoriasis and those sorts of things, you know, clear, red, inflamed skin. This is the first port of call that I would go to. If you walked into my clinic and you asked me for a skincare routine, the first thing I would do is I would start asking you about your gut as well, let's say, rather than instead of. Because you will have a treatment, don't you, at the end of the day. So thank you for those that have listened to me live. And um, if you like what you're hearing, as I say, press the like. You can also ask questions and I will hopefully answer them next week. It looks as though we're going to be in lockdown for probably another good six weeks. So that's six more weeks of this, which would be quite good. I might get the um, situation right by then. But anyway, keep asking away. Give um, Give me some questions for next week and I'll look forward to seeing you then. Many thanks.